how do we put the compressive force into a pre-stressed beam? So when I was trying to pick up the pile of books, I pre-stressed them with my hands by squeezing on the outside. Uh, we can't do that in, in practice in real beams, so uh, what we do is to put some plates on the end and squeeze between those plates. How do we squeeze between those plates? Well, we run a cable through the middle and we tension that cable up. So I, what I've got here is a typical steel uh, cable that we would put through a beam. It's got seven wires twisted together to make it slightly flexible. Uh, it's anchored by means of some wedges in the end here, uh, which grip uh, with, within this collet. So when they're pulled into place, we can tension them up and we can pull on the cable. And the reaction to that pulling on the cable is a force between the collet and the plate on the end of the beam, which puts the whole beam into compression. Okay, so to show how uh, a pre-stressed concrete beam works, I've built this model. And this model is made of separate blocks of acrylic uh, material. Uh, and around the outside, I've wrapped a yarn of uh, aramid fibers. Uh, these yarns go round 10 times. They're tied off with a reef knot at the end over here. And what I'm then doing is I'm pushing the, uh, this end plate away uh, by using a spanner here on this nut uh, and that uh, puts the yarns into tension which puts the uh, beam into compression and this is the objective of the exercise we're trying to get the compression force into the beam and the yarn is merely the way of reacting that force now with the beam in this position I can put significant loading onto this beam uh, before uh, the beam starts to crack or to fail. So to see the importance of the yarn for the, and the force that it generates for the beam, uh, I can now cut this yarn and we'll see what happens to the beam in that situation. So I'm going to cut it here. and the structure completely collapses. So you can see there is no glue or adhesive or anything that's holding this cable to get this beam together. It was purely held together by the pre-stressing force. How in practice do we feed the pre-stressing cables through a beam? In practice, there are two forms of pre-stressed concrete. The word pre-stressing refers to the fact that we're applying an external force to the structure before we apply the load to which uh, it, the beam is going to be subjected. But we can apply the pre-stressing force itself before or after we have cast the concrete. If we do it after we've cast the concrete, we leave a duct through the middle of the beam, uh, we thread the steel cables through, we anchor them, as I showed you earlier with the, the, the wedges, and we stress the cable up, applying the force to the concrete. That leaves a gap between the cable and the outside of the duct, and we fill that duct with cementitious grout, which protects the cable uh, against corrosion. This form of construction is called post-tensioned pre-stressed concrete because the, the stressing is applied after the concrete has been cast. The alternative is to uh, stress the cables up before we cast the concrete. When we do that, we anchor the cables against massive anchor blocks that are usually attached to the ground. The cables are stressed, the, a mold is put around the outside, the concrete beam is cast inside that mold. Once the concrete has hardened, the uh, cables are released and the uh, beam will get shorter and will go into compression. So that is known as pre-tensioned, pre-stressed concrete. Uh, pre-tensioned concrete is used for uh, repetitive uh, objects. So things like bridge beams, floor beams for buildings, railway sleepers, and so on. It produces a very durable product because the concrete is in intimate contact with the pre-stressing cables. 
But post-tension concrete can be more flexible because we can choose where within the beam to place the cables. Post-tensioned pre-stressed concrete gives us more versatility because we can position the cables at different places within the depth of the beam by using curved profiles for the tendons. Uh, the disadvantage is that the beam has no strength until after the pre-stress has been applied. So we have to have uh, some false work provided to take the weight of the structure. We also have to provide access to the ends of the tendons so the pre-stressing force can be applied. How much tension is needed? Well, in pre-stressed uh, concrete beams, we tend to use a lot of pre-stressing force. Uh, a typical pre-stressing force in a beam will be something like 10 times the weight of the beam itself. Uh, and if we're talking about a structure like a motorway overbridge, for example, uh, that may weigh 5,000 tonnes. Uh, so that means that we will need something like uh, uh, 50,000 tonnes of pre-stress force present in the beam, which is the equivalent of 500,000 uh, kilonewtons. This means that we actually have to have a lot of pre-stressing steel present in the beam to carry that force. Uh, and there is also, that means there's an advantage in using very high strength steels. And we typically use pre-stressing steels which will have strengths between 1700 and 2000 megapascals, which is something like five times as strong as conventional reinforcing steel. And this means that pre-stressed concrete structures typically use less steel than a reinforced concrete structure doing the same job, so, which is an additional advantage of using pre-stressed concrete. So do we still need reinforcing bars? Well, the purpose of pre-stressing a structure is to eliminate the tensile stresses so we don't have to provide reinforcement to, uh, to stop the structure cracking. But if you look at a pre-stressed concrete beam under construction, you'll find that it has small amounts of reinforcement, usually to resist shear forces uh, or to provide a cage to support the pre-stressing cables in position. Thank <laughs> you.